Zubats, and today we're going to be discussing a topic that is close to many a geologist's heart. Minerals. As many of us know, scientists really like their specialized term. And for geologists, one of the most common terms we use is mineral. So what really is a mineral? In general, minerals are the building blocks of rocks. Like a molecule is made up of atoms, rocks are made up of minerals. Which are then made up of molecules. Which are then made up of atoms. So I'm going to walk you through the five components that make something a mineral. Number one is that it has to be inorganic. Now for something to be inorganic simply means it does not contain any carbon. So any substance that has carbon in it, not a mineral. The second is that it has to have a repeating internal crystalline structure. Now this one is a little bit more difficult to understand. It all boils down to how the atoms are arranged. So let's look at the crystalline structure of quartz. So quartz, as we can see, has the chemical composition of SiO2. However, for every silica, we have four oxygen. This is the basic building block of quartz, one silica and four oxygen. And then this structure repeats throughout the crystal. There you have it, quartz. Third is that the substance has to be solid at standard temperature and pressure. Now standard temperature and pressure is 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere of pressure. So ice, while it may fit into some of these categories, is liquid at standard temperature and pressure, therefore not a mineral. Number four is that it has to be naturally occurring. So this one is fairly straightforward, it simply can't be man-made. Like an alloy or a plastic would be excluded from being a mineral. If you can't find it naturally in the field, not a mineral. And the final component to whether or not something is considered a mineral is that it has to have a consistent chemical composition. Now while there is some wiggle room in what makes up a mineral, its chemical formula has to be fairly consistent. While amethyst, a variant of quartz, has trace amounts of iron in it, which give it that purple color, its chemical composition overall is still SiO2. So because we're scientists, we like definitions. However, because we're geologists, we also like to fudge those definitions. So as you remember, the first component is that the substance has to be inorganic. However, coal is all carbon, and geologists are coal experts. So while by definition coal is not technically a mineral, we still study it like it's a mineral. <laughs> the other rule that is sometimes broken is the repeating internal structure. Sometimes when molten rock is cooled really quickly, think underwater, the atoms in the melt do not have time to arrange themselves into the nice repeating pattern that they like. When this happens, the rock is said to have a glassy texture, and obsidian is a classic example. So after you have decided whether or not something is actually a mineral, there are different components that will help you determine what mineral you actually are looking at. These tools include color, which is not always super helpful, luster, basically is it metallic or non-metallic, texture, and hardness. But those are topics for another day. So there you go, there is a brief introduction to what geologists study and what we mean by minerals. Remember to like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you would like to see more, and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye. My dog's freaking out because I'm not angry. I'm not, that's just my vlogging voice. I'm not angry. No. No, it's just what I don't like when I vlog. I know. Hi to Kipper.